I'll open the discussion to the board. Uh, you want us to take it one by one or whoever have a comment in this regard and then open it for questions. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to uh, l l comment in a particular area of interest? Uh, I'll just comment on uh, what you just said. It's uh, definitely that we're very optimistic about the entrepreneurship environment in the kingdom. And um, uh, an opportunity we have at SAG is we actually directly interact with the business sector, not only locally but internationally. So we have a huge uh, uh, opportunity of actually benchmarking and seeing what others do and actually figuring out what's the best way to do it in, in Saudi. And uh, in terms of supporting entrepreneurship, we've noticed that uh, the lack of the tools and information is huge in Saudi. Uh, it's something that we can definitely build on. And uh, in that regard, SAGI has two initiatives Specifically, specifically targeting entrepreneurs. One was launching the Centennial Fund. The Centennial Fund is a fund uh, targeting uh, entrepreneurs. It actually helps fund uh, their projects and actually gives them uh, kind of the tools to start their business. About 80% of all the entrepreneurs that apply to the Centennial Fund and get accepted, they have to go through uh, first stage, they have to go through classes to help them start their business. And actually, about 80% of all these entrepreneurs, after they take these classes, change their business plans. Because there's so many things that they didn't understand about the business environment. So it, it sends a strong signal that there's a lot of potential, there's a lot of opportunities, and people willing to work. But uh, they don't have access to the right tools to help them succeed. Another initiative that we're actually currently working on, have not launched yet, is a platform. A platform that actually provides um, the resources for any business to operate and thrive in the kingdom. For example, for a single business to start, they might need a project, a specific project to actually start with. They might need funding. They might need technical support. So what this platform that we're, uh, we're aiming to launch hopefully next year what it does is it brings all these people together, kind of in a single market. So they can actually come in, register, and find the other companies that can serve them in the areas that they're lacking. So uh, the gist of it is there's a huge potential. There's a lot of young Saudis actually willing and wanting to start. But I think there's a lot of uh, improvement needed in providing the tools for them to succeed. And, uh, Excellent. Anyone want to add to this? I just want to welcome Mr. Barak Suraj who joined us. Barak is managing Al Malaz Fund, which invests in ICT investment. So he's here to balance the investor's point of view in this regard. Just to, to, uh, to uh, l l set a, a couple of questions uh, to the panel and if they want to comment on it. Huh? People continuously say that there aren't enough entrepreneurs in Saudi Arabia. And most of the entrepreneurship happening in the region is happening in Jordan or happening elsewhere and there aren't this. Uh, I just want to get the panel view on this. May I? Please. Saudi entrepreneurship is, uh, uh, okay, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in Saudi, uh, some of them in the ICT sector, a lot of them are in the services sector, some of them even is on the uh, uh, innovation, innovation. Uh, innovation or uh, coming up with something from scratch. Uh, there's a lot of R&D that's being done in Saudi Arabia at the universities and so forth, whatever, that has not been commercialized. I'm seeing as a VC in the, pa uh, in the past two and a half years a great movement from the, uh, from the education institutes to look at commercializing a lot of the R&D. I see people like Kaust, which is King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, looking at uh, uh, how, from the start, how to monetize, how to create uh, uh, companies or uh, taking that idea from a pro from an idea to a prototype to a commercialized product from the inception of the university. So in the past two and a half years I've seen that on the innovation from scratch uh, side. But also entrepreneurship has always been 
present in Saudi Arabia. A lot of people coming out of the large companies, STC, the Aramco, the Sabic, and so forth, they come out and establish companies that would be uh, uh, supply to those companies. Athos Origin, as an example, are two Aramco employees that went out, did, uh, and then sold out to HP. The, I, the whole idea of our entrepreneurship is available, is there. It is at different strengths within the region. I look at uh, Jidda separately from I look at Put Makkah and Medina separately when I look at Riyadh, separately when I look at the, uh, the Eastern Province. Each one has a different flavor, each one has a different focus. And, uh, and it exists, it's on the ground, and maybe there isn't the exits like Maktoub and so forth, but we're, uh, 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 we're at the stage where acquisitions is being talked about. I've seen MENA companies acquire companies within Saudi, merge with them. So all of that is happening and so forth. Maybe it's not uh, on every billboard and so forth, but that's how Saudi is. Yes. If I can add uh, just one thing, and I, I'm going to be talking specifically maybe about, as, as uh, Dr. Shahid pointed out, the, the internet uh, entrepreneurship uh, scene, as I, you know, as I uh, see it, or you know, to, the, to the links that I uh, know about. Um, I mean, there are a lot of people who have websites, and a lot of them can monetize them and have you know, great traffic, and they, they're passionate about them, they have great communities, and and uh, you know they, they get get ads and they, they reach a certain level, but the thing is that they don't know what the next step is. Um, we don't have many like giant success stories that are really publicized in the right way, I think, uh, so that everyone can can, can set their aim uh, that high. Uh, I mean, we, we started with with with, with Maktoub and then their exit right now, so that's one great story for the region. Uh, but we're going to need a few more of those. We're going to need a few more of those in, in, in Saudi. Um, because there's always this, this perception that a lot of people will, will do it out of passion. And they, they, they sold it. And they, a lot of them sold it to, to, to Maktoub, their, their, their forums, and sold to other companies. Um, but they don't have this idea of, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this, you know, full time. I'm going to jump into it. Uh, it's going to be my livelihood. They, a lot of them think of it as just, you know, something to do for the weekends. Uh, you know, just, just, just a hobby or, or something just to, you know, give you a, a bit more uh, income. So, you know, when we sit, sit around in, in, in Saudi Arabia and in, uh, in groups such as the Riyadh Geeks or Mubadirun or, or the other, and we talk, we, there's always this, this comes up, this theme of we need success stories. So, you know, I, I think just if you're, if you're, if you're an, an entrepreneur in Saudi Arabia right now, I mean, there are a lot of different people right now. If you want to do something to, to improve the ecosystem, succeed. Make a hundred million dollars. Make a make a billion, and you will improve the the, 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 the ecosystem uh, greatly. That's just you know one point I wanted to, to touch okay. on. So, further. Yeah, I also think that uh, there is lots of uh, entrepreneurship taking place in Saudi Arabia. The problem that it's taking place in. Uh, uh, in, in two, in, at many levels. For example, at the university levels, there are so many universities who started small business development sections to encourage people to start their own business, like King Faisal University, they have incubators within the university, King Fahd University, for some time they have it as well. So this, at the university level, they exist. At the company level, you know, Saudi German Hospital was one of the first, maybe, a small business development center they have developed under the sponsorship of uh, Subhi Batarji. Abdul Latif Jamil and encouraging people to start their own, you know, vocational jobs. Aramco and Al Ahli Bank with Al Usar Al Muntija, which is a productive family, helping small needy family to. To, to the, teach them the provision, the, the profession, they give them the equipments and the financing, and they set up markets for them to sell their products as well. Chamber of Commerce, there is almost there is no big chamber of commerce in the kingdom without a small business development or entrepreneurship center in it. I was very happy to attend, I don't know who attended Jeddah exhibition about three weeks ago, and they had uh, 300 
I think uh, men and women, you know, 150 men and 150 women who started their own business, walking through the exhibition for four days and really s seeing success stories. I just wished that somebody documented those stories. There was lots of interviews and it was very well publicized in the newspaper with, uh, you know, uh, about many success stories at the Chamber of Commerce level. I also hear that Sheikh Saleh Kamil will launch uh, very soon, I think, a competition where people will come and present their business plans, and the winner, like the competition that you have in uh, in Britain, you know, publicized, and and then they vote, and the person who they like his uh, project, they give him fund in the spot. Gativit, which is a vocational government, uh, the Moses Al Amal Al Taalim Al Fani Wa Tadrib Al Mahni, the vocational training and technical institutes, they have assigned big portion of their fund and work to uh, help their graduates uh, start their own professions. Also economic cities, I can speak for the uh, uh, Medina Knowledge Economic City. We have a knowledge park and a large part of this park will be assigned for incubators for IT and multimedia industries. And the, uh, our brother from Sagia, he can elaborate regarding the other one. There is also lots of NGO and charitable organizations which help you know, young entrepreneurs, uh, you know, I can mention Jamaat al Bir, and there is a new one called Can Do in Jeddah, and Can Do help anybody who has a good idea, they raise a fund for him. So they do a fundraising, if they are convinced, if they take the guy with the idea, they go to the people who has the fund, and they try to raise the fund for him. And at the national level, you know, Sanduq al Ma'awiya, yes. yeah? Sanduq al Ma'awiya, so we have at national, university, company, chamber of commerce, you know, we have so many initiatives, but there is no one body that organizes this, or there is no professional society, or there is no one website uh, that, uh, you know, help people communicate and learn from each other uh, and uh, share resources among each other as well. Okay. Great. So just to, to move from this subject to another subject, I think consensus is there that there is plenty of entrepreneurship in Saudi Arabia. I just want to add uh, a very huge entrepreneurship center that no one talked about, which is family businesses. Uh, most families in Saudi Arabia have internal uh, R&D and they do uh, huge startups and finance it internally and such and, and they're very active in, in entrepreneurship in this aspect uh, uh, within the family. Uh, so if, it's, if we all agree that there are entrepreneurs in Saudi Arabia uh, and there are good success stories and such, so what's the issue? Is it a, me a media issue that media is not giving enough attention? Is it that those people, have, uh, the entrepreneurs, have other opportunities? Or what's really the, uh, why isn't Saudi Arabia on the map when it comes to entrepreneurship uh, in the region? Why isn't, uh, is only, you know, uh, less than 10% of the attendance here from Saudi Arabia in an event such as this one? Again, we're talking specifically about entrepreneurship and internet uh, market. Uh, as, uh, as the guy said, there are so many entrepreneurs, but the problem is most of them rely on bootstrapping to grow. Uh, in, in other areas, like in the United States or in Europe, once there is a small sign of success, uh, it's going to be very easy to raise funds, and they will have a chance to grow. On the other hand, I see so many uh, talented uh, entrepreneurs in Saudi Arabia start some initiative, it has, it has some sign of uh, success, but they will eventually vanish because if you're not making positive cash flow, sooner or later you will give up or just close your uh, enterprise. So this is a main issue, I think, the financing uh, part. Uh, I, I've heard of very few people who actually got funding and grow out of financing. In Maktoub case, uh, book, a good portion of their valuation was from websites acquired from Saudi Arabia. So they utilized this chance, bought mm -hmm. successful uh, initiative from Saudi Arabia, and uh, integrated with their portal, grow it up, then sold the whole company. Mm -hmm. So I think the, one of the main missing parts is the financing. Uh, Could, so sure. we have two people. Saudi also has some uh, other problems, uh, which uh, us as a VC have been highlighting. Uh, one is the commercial law. The commercial law in Saudi Arabia allows only for common stock. There is no any structure. There is no ability to have options uh, and all of that. 
there is no clawback mechanisms that would uh, uh, that an investor when he invests can actually come into so there is certain things that are being looked at and there's a new commercial law coming hopefully it'll come out but uh, uh, that is one number two is uh, in uh, there are some governmental agencies i.e. Sadad uh, and others that are impeding the growth which is the payment gateway capability the mobile gateway capability and so forth and uh, thirdly are the uh, as I always say the greed of the telecom companies of wanting 60% of the revenue coming in from a uh, from a value added service provided through them and paying nine months later to the entrepreneur so these factors stop uh, uh, this disencourage VCs to put in money because from a high risk and uh, until now the government ha doesn't have supporting venture capital equity uh, investment hopefully with the three techno valleys uh, Riyadh, Jeddah and Dahran once it matures things will happen I have uh, just a follow up to you Barak I, I need, uh, uh, to keep the optimism uh, 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 do you see this changing what you mentioned Yes, I do. The reason is that I look at Saudi Arabia that I see it, the puzzles are in place. They're not put together, but they're there. I see the commercial law being looked at with the new commercial law. I see Saudi Post GPS every house and building in Saudi Arabia and available, so the delivery mechanism is there. I see pressure being done by us and others on Sadad to make the payment gateway work, the mobile pay, uh, payment uh, gateway work, and we're bringing it up to high levels in the government and with Al-Aghar, with the think tank and all that. So there's a lot of pay, uh, things that are put in place. Plus Saudi, as we said, has the entrepreneurship. And last is a large market, consumer market that can be served. So uh, last year, 20, uh, the ICT market in Saudi Arabia is 22.9 billion uh, rials being spent in Saudi Arabia. That is an attractive market. And if uh, Saudis can't, ma can't make it, also uh, other companies can, uh, look into uh, regionally look into Saudi Arabia as an attraction. Thank you. Just uh, to, to comment on this and, and open the uh, ask the panel about this, do you see this huge growth of Saudi Arabia in different industries? A contributing factor to, you know, a, a reduction of entrepreneurship because those potential entrepreneurs are getting huge salaries working in, in, in the companies that are growing and getting, you know, multiples of what others would get in neighboring countries in this regard. Would this be a, a contributing factor? I don't think so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't think so. The reason is uh, this... All the studies tell us that the number of people on the job market coming out uh, uh, into the job market in the next 10 years requires Saudi Arabia to double its uh, uh, positions to, uh, from an employment perspective. Now, so those jobs will be filled out and there will be a lot more. But the entrepreneurial spirit is not for everybody. Because at the end, uh, he has to jump off a cliff and build a plane. So, not everybody, not, not everybody that's coming to the job market has that entrepreneurial spirit. But because I see a lot of uh, uh, young people growing up and seeing their family being a mutawif uh, in Mecca, that's uh, providing a service, and so he's enthusiastic. He lives an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, family and he wants to be an entrepreneur so there will be positions filled there will be people that want to lay back but the entrepreneurial spirit is a fire that doesn't go away to ask mr muhammad uh, since he is working in an education uh, entity that educate entrepreneurs right uh, what's the quality of entrepreneurs that you have seen compared to international uh, entrepreneurs and uh, what's the major uh, issues that you faced with them to get them uh, started? I think uh, not everybody is uh, 
can be a good entrepreneur. There is a core competences that needed to succeed in entrepreneurship. There was lots of research that was done on successful and unsuccessful entrepreneur, and there is a profile for the quote unquote the right entrepreneur. We try to use some of these tools in the Jeddah Chamber of Commerce, small business development, and even try to coach some people who are interested to come, you know, please don't do it just because you know, you see your neighbor and relative did this. So we used to, you know, apply a, a, a profiling assessment that looks at his uh, risk-taking initiative, his, uh, uh, to what extent he is uh, go in depth in, uh, pay attention to details and analysis, and his uh, convincing and uh, negotiation skills and his ability uh, to, to lead. So these are, uh, I think, you know, out of my memory, that uh, some of the core competences needed for a successful entrepreneur. Thank you. To put uh, Abdurrahman Trabzoni on the spot here, uh, not necessarily from your Google experience, but from the whole uh, uh, exposure uh, online that you have with multinationals in this regard, how does Saudi Arabia rank in terms of size now, uh, in terms of potential, and in terms of focus and uh, being a targeted market uh, uh, for international uh, entities to participate there? Uh, <clears throat> uh, sure, so Saudi is, uh, is actually, so it's the biggest market in, in MENA, but then again, even the, the, the internet penetration rates, uh, the, the amazing growth that Saudi has seen in, in the, so, uh, so mobile penetration, internet penetration, and even in smartphone, devices coming into Saudi. So in 2009, 12 million smartphone devices uh, came into the Middle East. Uh, approximately a good eight to nine million of them went to Saudi Arabia. And we're talking about tier one and tier two devices. These are, these are typically iPhone slash Android slash uh, Blackberry devices. So, so you have 40% internet penetration. You have these uh, smartphone devices uh, coming into the market. Uh, you have, uh, did anyone say anything? Okay. Um, you have um, you have 60 percent of Saudis who are online of the 40 percent of the population 60 percent of them are checking the web daily uh, you have a lot of demand um, uh, for Google I, I, I mean I I wish uh, if I can share a couple of very extremely eye-opening figures but Saudi ranks among the top um, few nations globally in a number of our products um, and we're talking Saudi being in the league of countries like China and Russia and the U.S. Very eye-opening figures. Uh, one day we're going to talk to our legal guys and, and hopefully get them published because that's what we need. What we need to share to, to show the demand, to show the type of the amazing supply gaps that are in the market. I mean, literally. Um, so I go to work every day. We do all these due diligences and and we analyze the market. And you just scratch your head and you're like. Who's monetizing this? Where are the companies, um, the, the jihads, Assams, the Rashids of the world? There are, there are a lot of, uh, I mean, you wish you could just clone all these Saudi entrepreneurs and, and just let them loose. Um, the market is really on the verge of a huge tipping point. And I think in two years' time, um, the ecosystem is shaping up to be, uh, I mean, really on par with what uh, really advanced markets are showcasing. Uh, so, so yes, um, in two years' time, I, I personally believe, and data shows, that Saudi is on the verge of a huge tipping point. Uh, online advertising spend is going to reach very um, uh, compelling levels, the demographics of the country, the internet penetration levels. Um, so the question that lends itself, and I, and I keep, uh, I mean, I was hearing to, to, the, to the valuable input of the panel, given, given these metrics and statistics and, and very positive so the market has a very positive pulse to it, and it's e going to get even stronger in the next two years. What would it take for Saudi entrepreneurs to, to, to build, so go beyond entrepreneur, so low impact entrepreneurship to high impact entrepreneurship, to disruptive technologies, to go to, to, to say, create the Facebook, Twitters, and Googles of the world? Um, because if I were to, to put on a conspiracy theorist hat, um, some people might disagree, but it seems to me that our, uh, so the global, uh, so localization tools, the user experience adaptation tools are becoming so advanced at the level that you go to YouTube now and 
um, any, la uh, any video posted in any language in the world, you can now literally watch in your own language with subtitles because we're doing these um, translations on the cloud. So a lot of these tools are coming up, right? And all these global web companies are now becoming really localized. They're entering to your uh, Saudi, a US company is entering your Saudi home and saying, I'm Saudi, I am now very local, I'm localized, um, you're gonna feel your, 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 your culture embedded in my user experience, which, which, which results in the question, so if, we, if that gap of opportunity is quickly closing down because of these advancements in, in user localization tools, it seems to us that the market dynamics of uh, the competitive landscape of establishing something truly disruptive in MENA is not gonna last for long. I mean, eventually in three years time, you're gonna have a Japanese guy who's sitting maybe in Australia who's writing an e-commerce application targeting MENA and could win um, um, and, and just uh, eat away the, the lunch of the Saudi entrepreneurs who's been just cracking at this. So the question is what what is it, what's needed to enable us to go to that level? And, and this is uh, just an open question that I'd love to hear more of. If uh, anyone in the panel would like to comment on anything, or we can open it for questions. Well, I'd like to, sorry, just to quickly comment on what you just said. Uh, and also, we would comment about the laws and regulations in the kingdom. Um, from a SAGA perspective, when we look at the problems dealing, that the private sector deals with, at the same time, we act as consultants to the government in terms of uh, helping change some of these uh, laws and regulations. So I'm actually very optimistic. Um, His Excellency the Governor, Amr al-Dabbagh of Saudi spoke earlier today, and he mentioned Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia's ranking in terms of ease of doing business. And this year, we ranked, just came out this week, 11th globally in terms of ease of doing business. Obviously, there's a lot more to do, and even though you have the regulations in place, you still have to apply it, and the implementation is key. Uh, but still, it gives you uh, an idea about um, the, the process and the development that the government is going through, and its uh, commitment to changing these laws and regulations. I'll just give you one example. Uh, the limited liability company, the capital required, in 2007, uh, was changed from one of the highest in the world to one of the lowest. It was changed uh, at the end of year. As soon as that change was made to decrease the capital required to set up an LLC, the licenses issued for an LLC in that last month of 2007 was more than the whole year combined. So there, there's a lot of initiatives, there's a lot of support uh, in changing these regulations, making them more stream, uh, mainstream. Uh, another example is you mentioned the Centennial Fund, Sunduq al Mawiya. Uh, Sunduq al Mawiya also adds a lot of, um, uh, uh, shows a lot of commitment, not only by, from the government, but also the private sector. Uh, the Centennial Fund helps entrepreneurs by providing funding, but also mentors. They align with uh, uh, other Saudi businessmen and businesswomen who actually volunteer to mentor. Uh, the entrepreneurs that have been funded by the, uh, by the Centennial Fund. And a lot of these entrepreneurs, after they actually succeed, come back and volunteer to actually um, mentor other uh, businessmen. So it, it shows that they actually appreciate what's been done. The tools that they got really helped them succeed, and they're giving back to the community. And finally, just to focus a little more on ICT, uh, Saudi Arabia launched a broadband initiative. Not, not only to watch YouTube, but uh, to actually offer the infrastructure to help uh, give businesses the tools they need to succeed. And, in, and internet is definitely one of uh, the top ones uh, to help them do that. Okay. I just have a quick comment on, on uh, what's been said, but generally on why uh, we don't see a lot of high impact entrepreneurs. First of all, take a step back. I think we need to define entrepreneurship, and I think that's an impossible thing to do. But one definition I like was that to, to, to enter a project not knowing what resources you need and whether you have it or not, and just, as you said, jumping off a cliff and building a plane. Uh, good luck. And it's, uh, it's, it's not easy to find people who are willing to do that. And then there's, there's a separation between... Um, 
as Abdurrahman was hinting at, high impact entrepreneurs and then people who are doing something part time, like a dry cleaning service or something like that. I think in Saudi, generally speaking, maybe in the past, I, I believe it is changing. I am optimistic as you are, Shade. But I believe in Saudi, um, there's this uh, cultural thing where, Abdurrahman, you've hinted at this as well in, in a lot of your talks as well. There's this. Uh, cultural thing where people are more comfortable in their full-time paid jobs and it really takes a lot of guts for them to leave that leave that steady flow of income and start something on their own and basically jump and build a plane um, I just wanted to highlight the difference when we were talking we're looking at something that's more high impact maybe more tech and so on and so forth the way I see it from my humble experience is that entrepreneurs in Saudi go through a pipeline before they you know, make it, uh, and, and we're waiting for, inshallah, soon uh, someone who makes it and really demonstrates uh, being able to go from, just to use a phrase, from rags to riches. But I think uh, there are like three areas where there is some, entrepreneurs have issues. One is awareness, education, and inspiration. Um, if you resolve that, through either having an exemplar who makes it from rags to riches or really uh, implementing programs that really are impactful. I mean, we have a lot of programs and initiatives in the kingdom and, and they aspire to achieve a lot. And some of them actually do, but some of them are struggling to reach that point. And we do not know who, who's doing what or how impactful they are. And we probably should talk to them or talk to the entrepreneurs that they're dealing with and see what's lacking and try to help them and so on and so forth I mean together as different players in this space but then you have the, the if you pass that if you get people to get really fired up they'll go to the second let's say point which is raising funds and as Assam said it's not really easy people are more comfortable people are rejecting more less risky deals on a daily basis and then when they see something like VC related they're like why should I invest in this and and until that becomes trendy, or until there is awareness, so I'm sorry to say, but sometimes people invest on a trend, and or until that becomes trendy, or until there's awareness that there is huge potential in investing in startups, or investing in ventures, and so on and so forth, we might have a problem here. And then if you pass that, it's the regulations again. And I've, I know a lot of people, uh, some of them are actually here, who whose business plans, whose financial models, whose, pro whose projections took a, I mean, a serious hit because their, uh, let's say, papers are stuck with one guy who doesn't get around to do his job for one reason or another, for one, in one agency or another. Whether it's, I don't want to name places, but it's all over, it's across the board. And I think until we resolve these three areas, and maybe others, I'm, I'm speaking... Uh, from my own humble experience, until we resolve these areas and really get that, as Abdurrahman also, also always, the first entrepreneur that jumps or goes through this pipeline and really makes it, we're, we, we, our efforts will sort of fall short. That's just what I wanted to comment. I tend to agree with you on two of the three points, uh, Faisal. Yani. I fully agree that awareness, uh, education, maturity in general, uh, marketing, uh, those entrepreneurs and such, uh, is, is an area that Saudi Arabia lacks. Uh, probably media companies need to be educated. Probably uh, there has to be entities dedicated for this. And I was very inspired in Jordan having Venture Magazine there, talking young entrepreneurs being you know on the cover of, uh, of such a magazine going back to their families showing them look i'm a cover at the cover of a magazine or something like this having you know a little, uh, entities talking together so that you have the queen rania the Andover, the others and then you have the start alliance linking them and such we but i think it's maturing this is happening media is always you know a little, an issue there uh, what uh, I don't agree with you particularly is the part where people are comfortable staying in jobs uh, to that. 
Uh, I don't think this is true. This was true when the government job was the secure place to be. However, most of those people do businesses on the side. So they have the entrepreneurship spirit by definition. But what type of business? They're mostly, I Whatever. mean, with time, they're opening, becoming more Opening a laundry impact. shop is entrepreneurship. But uh, yeah, okay. uh, if you talk just, entrepreneurship okay. in general, l l uh, having a, a, you know, a carpenting shop or a kabda or whatever is entrepreneurship in a way. Low impact, a very, very low impact. But what I think is uh, a, a contributing factor, which Barak uh, did not agree with me on it, is the issue of uh, having the a few low-hanging fruits, talented uh, entrepreneurs being picked up by companies for big salaries. You have 80,000 students uh, under scholarship studying in Ivy League universities. Now those people, the top and brightest people studying in the best schools will be picked up by, you know, l l l multiples of the salaries of their peers in any company. So the risk to reward ratio of them dropping out from those companies is going to be uh, very, very, you know, l l l l uh, unlucrative for them to do this. So I see this to be... Let them graduate, come, fill the positions, the next wave will not find, and so forth. Th Saudi Arabia has five million students. Saudi Arabia has a lot of people in that pyramid coming up into the job market. The, uh, some of them will get into those. Uh, Absolutely. Will take time, but uh, the ones that saw the spirit, that went to Stanford. It's a matter of time, Barak. That saw the entrepreneurial, they'll come, yeah. come back with Absolutely. the Absolutely. But you see, I agree. The quality mm -hmm. of the entrepreneurs in Saudi Arabia, the entrepreneurs to be yes. in Saudi Arabia is extremely high. And I dare say higher than many other com countries in the region. Huh? Uh, the issue is that until those go through the maturity cycle of getting educated, getting exposed, trying, doing something, it may be too late. Uh, so uh, those people who I'm talking about are the people who are ready now. Uh, okay. We don't want them to, uh, sure. we want them to, to create precedents and to create the success stories that will inspire others to, to do the same. The thing is, uh, in 96, I made my first investment uh, outside the kingdom, okay? And when I, I was one of very few, today I see much more. What I'm trying to say is that, that's why I said in the past two and a half years. In the past two and a half years, a lot has changed. And... I, when I look at the next two and a half years, there is a lot changing. There is entrepreneurial spirit. There are pieces of the puzzle coming together. There are decision makers that get it. Amr Dabba gets it. So there are some people that are up there preaching, the, uh, singing the same songs we are. And I believe that things will, it's not there today. I agree. But I'm optimistic. Inshallah. Anyone want to comment or shall we start with the questions? Okay, Jason. Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, something. What I've understood is that there is a lot of entrepreneurs, there is a lot of opportunities, uh, they have the spirit and they have everything going on, uh, and from what I've heard, uh, the government is doing what it can. So, uh, not everything, but it's do doing what it can, what it can at this point. So. W why aren't we seeing more of these high impact? Uh, I can't c clearly uh, pinpoint what's what's missing. Uh, maybe you can elaborate. And just one one more thing about uh, you've talked about the, the sp specific behaviors of uh, entrepreneurs. If you can just pinpoint one trait or behavior that Saudi entrepreneurs need to develop even more uh, to to help develop their ecosystem. Uh, uh, it might not directly answer the question, but uh, it's so. Um, I'm very biased. I I'm pro internet, pro tech, and I always say that we, as Saudi Arabia government and private sector, should believe and should all say together that the internet could be our economic engine of growth, and it could allow us as a country to leapfrog the competition globally and catch up with first world uh, countries. Yani, 
And I don't hear that, يعني, and again, I'm very biased. I, I'm, I'm saying internet, web, and mobile. And I don't see that government agency that's, that's يعني, 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 I don't see a government agency that, that's talking on that wavelength. يعني, you have the Ministry of Tech that's doing all their own things, focusing on e-government. You have SAGA doing a great job importing, so getting FDI. I'd love, and again, you guys, um, Obviously, no. Yeah, in, in Saudi, um, you need to have an owner who really gets it, who can lobby other government agencies, who has one thing, one niche problem he wants to solve and runs with it. And I wish we can have an agency or someone who's who's really going to take this as a vehicle and say, yes, I am betting on the internet as a vehicle for Saudi Arabia to be a first world class country. Um, um, so that's one. And I forgot the, the other point I wanted to talk about. Um, so I know, you know, I, I was at the Hayat al Salat Saudi, CITC. CITC, I was in a meeting there last week and they have a consultation with McKinsey and I know that they are, they will launch very uh, soon an initiative to support small IT industries in Saudi Arabia, not necessarily you know, internet industries by IT industries. And they have different interventions that they are discussing now, but they will launch this very soon. Uh, great. Um, and uh, I, I just remember what I wanted to say. It's actually, so just a small note. I remember we were in this very big conference uh, sponsored by a, a, a Saudi government organization talking about incubators and technology. And I remember there was all this talk that we're going to do incubators and we're putting in hundreds of millions of reals to do X, Y, and Z. It was all nice. It was all great. And I remember this kid. He was 13 years old. He went up and he was like, I have a question. And uh, he was like, so I know Steve Jobs. I know Bill Gates. I know Mark Zuckerberg. And I know a lot of these guys either did it through in their garages or their, uh, their college dorms. So what's, why am I hearing you guys talking about the other end of the spectrum and putting all this money in? So what enabled someone like Mark or Steve Jobs or whoever to build something great and disrupt the world out of a college dorm? And it seems to me now it's back to, I mean, we could go into detail about this uh, topic, but it's education and, and attitude. And, and this, this might, uh, I might be totally wrong, but I have this theory. And if you look at these successful entrepreneurs, if you look at Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, uh, actually Steve Wozniak, Jobs was, is, a, is a pure sales guy, Wozniak and, and Bill Gates, what do they have in common? I think a lot of these guys at a, at a certain point, especially around their middle years in, in so in, in middle school, if you, if you look at them, a lot of them were exposed to either a programming language, some kind of class that taught them electronics, and they dabbled with this stuff at a fairly young age, right? And when the opportunity, when, when it was the right time and the right place, they had the tools to just jump and create something great. Now, take a cross-section of, of Saudi high school graduates. How many of them know the current state of the art web programming uh, uh, framework? How many of them could build a, a chip? Like just a simple chip that does. So, and again, this we could go on and on, but education and attitude. Uh, a small story that I that I can end with is uh, uh, one. So uh, Faisal's uh, niece, uh, I remember, was uh, and and you can elaborate on this, but uh, she she had a class on on uh, the balance sheet of lemonade stands. Tayeb, she's nine years old, and she came back. It was just one class, and she came back and she went on and on about how. She could create all these businesses, and now she started thinking she got into that mood. And it was all because of one class that taught her how to build a balance sheet for a lemonade stand. And they went and did this entrepreneurial activity at a fairly young age. So a lot of exposure is needed. We need these graduates to have the tools. And, and, and again, it, it, is, it is that simple. You need to get them equipped with the current state of... So what... what, what, what so that, yeah. Technology is important. Get them to be exposed to it at a fairly young age, and get them to get them to build something at a fairly young age. That, when it's the right time and the right place, they could become the next big entrepreneur. And have a really cool uncle. <laughs> uh, let me add on this. Are you asking about again internet entrepreneurship or general entrepreneurship, even traditional businesses? 
in, in the technology or in general in general uh, again uh, statistically if you have if you need highly impact high impact uh, success you need so many uh, initiatives so many medium success or low level success stories uh, if you're talking about facebook or twitter these uh, companies uh, are one of out of maybe 100,000 or something so we need mass initiatives in order to have one or two huge successes so you have to ask yourself how to make so many initiatives and one or two will be uh, high impact so reverse the question don't yeah, don't concentrate why don't let me let me come with another approach so yes, let me try to like, like, have a stab at Faisal's question two parts one high impact entrepreneurship I think there is plenty of high impact entrepreneurship they touch our lives every day in Saudi Arabia huh? when you uh, drink a cup of coffee from Dr. Cape this is entrepreneurship purely Saudi uh, then it's growing uh, when you eat uh, at al uh, when you do this when you do that uh, although al is not Saudi huh? but uh, l -l hmm? Kudu is Saudi huh? <laughs> whatever yani they, there are no uh, all the big businesses in Saudi started by individuals less than 30 years ago uh, started by them coming from poverty without a lot of cash without this now there is now they are not celebrated they're not considered they're not marketed enough they don't come because they got used to there is no uh, lack of corporate governance and and you know proper uh, l -l 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 taking those companies public and, and and things of this sort those guys are still up to their noses in, in in operations that they can't come and contribute back to the community and speak in events and and do stuff huh? so this is uh, there is big impact uh, this now when you talk about it in specific there are, there have been some good success stories in saudi arabia how a world sold for millions uh, I know many entrepreneurs have sold above a million, two, three, four million uh, their businesses to other uh, internet companies. Now, it's a cultural thing that Saudis don't like to brag about how much money they made out of a business. Maybe that's that's part of it. But uh, l l this is this is one point. The other thing, when you asked, what is the one thing that entrepreneurs can do, regardless of the industry? Uh, my answer is read. I don't think that only 50 Saudi entrepreneurs or 80 Saudi entrepreneurs were interested to come to such an event like this one. I think it's just that they didn't know about it. Uh, now, if they were reading more, if they were picking up a newspaper or reading at a blog or something like this, knew about it, I don't think they cannot afford to, to travel and, and, and visit this. You'd have seen hundreds of them here. Uh, but they, uh, we're so full of ourselves, we don't want to read, we don't want to learn from other mistakes or uh, success stories in this regard. Uh, and um, just that last point, do you think the language barrier contributes at all? It definitely does. Huh? But يعني, uh, to me, it's simple. Uh, show people where the money is, they will overcome every kind of barriers. Uh, the stock market is the biggest example. Huh? Out of a few thousand people, you know, trading online to millions, to have to three quarters of the country subscribing to IPOs. I, I, I used to get a 70-year-old guy calling me. I didn't know how he got my mobile, telling me that my mobile share subscription is expired and I need to renew it now. Now, that guy, I, I assure you, he didn't dial his own phone. Uh, he couldn't know and he's using state-of-the-art trading uh, platforms to, to do online trading because what there is money in it huh? when the uh, agriculture boom in Saudi Arabia uh, uh, grew and uh, all these sweet farms uh, were happening huh? we know families that flew in irrigation pivots and pipes from the US to Saudi Arabia flew it in uh, you know when you when you ship air freight pipes steel pipes to come just to catch this season because there is money in it huh? well, well, petrochemicals saudis conquered huge difficult hard to you know penetrate industries who, who would have said that people with no education could be some of the biggest bankers in the region huh? well, well, uh, out of this so they penetrated every kind but just show them that there is money in it so what is not happening is, again, it's an awareness thing. Now, yes, what Abdurrahman mentioned in terms of education and stuff is very important. It's long term. 
but if you show people where the money is, they will teach their kindergarten kids about this because they want them to make money for them. Uh, so it's, 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 it's happening, but I would rather focus on the opportunity and educating more people and pushing more people and raising awareness of this than to focus on the long-term stuff in this regard. And, and just to add to that, and maybe, I don't know how, but foster a culture of where there is no fear of failure. I mean, this is always mentioned that um, people who do not fear failure and or are proud of their failures because they know that, as today in one of the talks it was mentioned, it's just a process of learning how to get to winning. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not an education expert, but I think if you teach people uh, or children, as Abdurrahman was hinting, uh, at, at young age, I mean, they're already young, but they teach children to to not fear failure, that would create this venturous, uh, you know, spirit about them, I think, in addition to what you said. Yeah. And from an impact, we have entrepreneurs Saleh Kamil as an example, when he first started, he had a comfortable job. He decided that he wants to become an entrepreneur. He drove the, his car between towns to measure how many kilometers and how much gas that will take when he took on the fir his first project. There are entrepreneurs that roughed it and made it. One of the things, we don't celebrate their successes and their failures in the right framework. Unfortunately, in Saudi, we pay too much attention to uh, soccer uh, and singers, which when we are celebrating our entrepreneurs and mentioning, okay, I, I came into a venture and failed, and I am better because of it, is something that we need to uh, speak of it more. I would add one more point in this regard. I, I see this is somewhat flacking, but it's changing uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. I, I don't like to focus on the negative stuff usually, uh, because negativity will just, you know, uh, make others, you know, uh, reluctant to go into this. Uh, what, what we want is more and more entrepreneurs, investors. We want to cooperate to make this pie bigger, and then we can uh, start sharing it. I think one of the issues we have in Saudi Arabia is lack of uh, champions. What, what we need, uh, here in, in the UAE, you have Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid championing uh, entrepreneurship himself, driving it, pushing it, uh, and such. And in Jordan, you have King Abdullah himself uh, bringing you know, people and, and pushing and, and facilitating and such. Saudi Arabia, we have some champions, but they're not you know, uh, at an authority point. Uh, Abdul Latif Jamil is a huge champion of entrepreneurship. Uh, and and uh, he's done so much to, to, uh, to this. And, and, and many other, Governor at the back, is a, is a great champion of this. However, we need people with more influence. We need people with... Uh, it's, it's wrong that such an event that uh, regulators, uh, people in authority and such are not sitting here with us, and whether on the panel or on the beanbags uh, in this regard. So it's all the bureaucracy associated with it, being too busy, spread too thin in that aspect. That needs to change in this regard. But it is changing. We see yeah, people, you know, Prince Turkey of Caxt is doing amazing stuff, Sp really, really, you know, l l l spreading himself too thin, trying to start the badders and the other incubators and changing the regulations in Saudi Arabia and doing stuff. But uh, to have one or two or people, unless they're at the top of the pyramid, it's not uh, enough in this regard. Uh, just to add, in, uh, at least in terms of exposure and uh, getting these entrepreneurs out there and uh, appreciating their success, uh, the doctor mentioned uh, in, in Jeddah, the entrepreneurship uh, forum, and uh, Riyadh, they just had a franchise forum a couple of weeks ago. And uh, not to talk about SAGE, but um, uh, one of uh, the events we host annually is the Global Competitiveness Forum. This attracts uh, global speakers from all over the world. And um, one segment of this three-day event is actually the 100 fast-growth Saudi companies where we actually list the fastest growing Saudi companies and uh, give them recognition for what they're doing. And this exposure, I think, is important for several reasons, but one of which, which you called exposing them and actually encouraging others to see success stories and try and follow in their footsteps. 
one want to comment or shall we take another question? Adi? Uh, is this working? Okay. Um, I think one of, one of the main things that about Saudi Arabia that needs to be done more is actually covering the stories, the success stories of the entrepreneurs themselves. I think Saudi Arabia is full of success stories and entrepreneurship. You mentioned the Sheikh Saleh, uh, I think definitely it's a huge success story. And there's a lot of, like him from a, a big scale entrepreneurship or even from the startup's perspective. Uh, Qayyim is a big example of a startup that is fantastic and I think has a lot of potential to grow. But then I have other questions for you, Abdul Rahman, for example, is you could be a potential high impact entrepreneur with your Sifr, for example, startup. Yet you chose joining Google. Sorry for this question, but I had to add. <laughs> Why? Wow. Grilling me, Adi. Uh, good question. So, Sifr. Sifr, uh, it's a company. We started it. We won the MIT entrepreneurship competition. Um, let's see. It was getting to a level where I'm going to, this is going to be very detailed, uh, very specific to Sifr. But uh, it seems, it, it, well, the founders, all of us, we were on scholarships and we had to go back. And uh, without going into a lot of the details, but uh, unfortunately the founding team had different priorities uh, post-launch. And what really helped us to, to I wouldn't say dismantle, but uh, we had a very nice product. It was, it was growing steadily. We had a, a, a user base that, that was growing. We had seven day actives of, so tens of thousands. Uh, uh, and it, it was just a matter, we, it was very, very little tweaks every now and then to get the product up and running and it was monetizing. So Sulfur is a very specific case where uh, we were lucky that we got something out and didn't do much uh, maintenance to keep it alive. But, but uh, I, 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 uh, I, I say this, uh, I say this publicly. But one big reason why I joined Google is that I believed um, that I could influence at least um, so the ecosystem by joining a company of the scale of Google and trying to shift their strategy to focus on MENA. It's, it's a battle, you know, corporates are corporates. Um, but, but I pr seriously and genuinely believe that I could um, uh, create impact. Um, and, uh, and let's see, I hope, I hope uh, we, can, we, can, we can do something. Uh, but but it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically very specific to, to how Sufr was, was was well maintained and, and it's growing and how Google could add a lot of value and I wanted to jump on that opportunity to, to at least do something in a set amount of years and say, at least I, I wanted someone with the scale of Google to come in and, 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 and get that buzz and excitement about internet startups in the region. Uh, well, let's see, I don't think so. I would. I mean, seeing what I see now, it's kind of, well, it's, it's the chicken and egg problem. I now, what, through my work, I'm seeing what kind of supply gaps exist in the market, and I bang my head against the wall, and I, this is the time where, where you'd wish you have $10 million just lying around, and you have a team of 20 very smart engineers, and you would go and say, X, Y, and Z are going to blow up in two years' time. Let's focus. Let's do it now. Um, for, <laughs> um, let's see. A lot of a lot of good things are are going to happen eventually, and hopefully, um, the current art entrepreneurs are uh, leading the way with their flag. Who, uh, um, good things are going to happen. I'm excited about what we can do, and it's uh, the, the 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 seeds are there, and you can see things happening. It's going to take some time, and I think the reason why we're all here is. We see it. It's happening. It's it's gonna get there, and we. The question is now: How can we accelerate that 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 rate of execution to get us to a level to just sit, make it shorter? Um, and whether we like it or not, it's it's the it's the way to go. Entrepreneurs are now. Uh, it's 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 just uh, it's almost like a new world order. It's it's not big companies anymore. The the job creation, the excitement. Uh, it's it's amazing how in in the past few decades. This, this whole shift happened in terms of economic development or even excitement about so jobs for fresh graduates. I mean, now 
when you talk to a lot of Saudis, a lot of them are going to say, yes, I actually want to leave uh, college as soon as possible and maybe start a company, which wasn't the case a few years ago. So uh, let's see, pretty exciting times. I think Saudi Arabia proved over and over uh, that they wake up to certain stuff late, but they pick up very fast and, and you know, uh, pass the, the region in that aspect. Huh? This is what happened in telecom, this is what happened in uh, stock market, this is what happened in agriculture, this is what happened in petrochemical, this is what ha what's happening now maybe in real estate, uh, in, in different industries. Huh? So uh, it comes a little late, lack of regulation, lack of everything, but this is, this is the norm everywhere. You know, Dubai here, when it started, Dubai just regulated, really regulated uh, and governed the real estate industry a few years ago. It's been booming for the past 10 years and, and no one, you know, said, no, wait, don't build uh, high rises until we have the proper regulation and proper governance and proper whatever. Yes, there will be people who will misuse this. But uh, at the end, uh, l -l 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 uh, the collective is that it's, it's beneficial for the country. So we, I don't, uh, you know, of course, governments, regulators and such have certain responsibilities, educators and, and such, everyone is playing a role in this. But however, there are ways not just to play the blame card and say, okay, because our uh, education sucks, we cannot uh, uh, have good entrepreneurs in Saudi. No, we can stimulate this to change and then to reach the next level and, and to, to capture the uh, addition of this, then we can start enhancing uh, left and right. Okay, I think you already have the mic, so go ahead. Sure, um, just one real quick question. I'm from the States and I think about entrepreneurship a lot. I work for NASDAQ Dubai and I work for NASDAQ OMX uh, in the US for a while. Um, one of the key advantages probably is really, really liberal bankruptcy law in the US. And I was just wondering about the status of bankruptcy law in, in Saudi um, at the moment. Thanks. All laws are uh, sucks in Saudi. Uh, <laughs> just but that one specifically. Plain and simple, yeah. Huh? <laughs> because yeah, there, there isn't uh, any you know real regulation. It's changing. Uh, new laws have been drafted and uh, you know being discussed and, and things are changing however now uh, it's lousy however investors lawyers uh, are smart enough to come up with uh, workarounds uh, holding a bvi company owning the uh, shares of the company and structuring everything there and, and, and doing stuff there are workarounds they're not that convenient but they'll do the job until you know the, uh, uh, the government uh, catch up uh, uh, but, uh, I thought the liability on limited companies are on the company itself. Yeah. Why would it be a problem if a company goes bankrupt? It's the process. It's, it's the whole process yeah, of, of uh, liquidating the company, taking it to... Uh, you cannot file for Chapter 11 protection and things of this sort. So the bankruptcy laws in Saudi are not uh, that structured. Simple. And the main advantage is just the turnover rate in terms of once you fail, you're able to start, pick up again, Absolutely. get moving, and that's that guy who keeps going at it, who makes success. Absolutely. In the States, you just fire for Chapter 11 and, and start your next company. And uh, here, no, if you uh, if your company go bankrupt, you have, you know, a little, you don't have personal liability because it's a limited liability company, but culturally speaking, other stuff, uh, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a government thing, but it all adds up. Uh, I, I wouldn't, sorry, just a comment. I, I wouldn't say the laws suck, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I say there's a, there's a lot to improve. But uh, in terms of the bankruptcy law specifically, to do that, you're going to need a credit system. Uh, so that's something that actually is new in Saudi, but it's getting implemented. So once that established, so the infrastructure for these kind of things are just starting. Uh, but at the same time, to start a business, you have options. You can start a sole uh, proprietorship, you can start a company, a corporation, a limited liability company. And I just mentioned the example where when they actually uh, reduced the capital requirement for LLCs, it just uh, applications just shot up. So you have these options. Yani, 
uh, the laws might not reflect the same laws in Europe or the US, but they still work for the region and we're, we're working on improving them. And again, I want to go back to saying um, doing business reports. Saudi is number 11. Tax, our tax system is the sixth uh, most uh, efficient in the world. Six. So these numbers yeah, need, uh, reflect a lot of what's actually happening in the ground. It not, might not be the same uh, procedures that are, a foreign investor is used to, but locally it's understood. It still needs to be improved. I'm not saying they're perfect, but I'm saying it's, uh, there are other um, uh, options. Okay, I uh, uh, retract. But you're keeping it positive. What's yeah. happened? <laughs> I retract my comment in that aspect. Uh, it's it's just that, again, opportunity is much bigger than anything else. Uh, so that's that's the main point. So if you want to capture that opportunity, you have to do some workarounds in, in certain cases. And uh, this goes to the first point I mentioned. Saudi Arabia is a different ecosystem, it's a different environment, it's a different everything. It's hundreds of times better than some regional third world uh, countries in terms of bureaucracy, in terms of corruption, in terms of uh, those things. It's much, much better than those countries. However, it's a different environment. So you cannot just come and expect to uh, apply an international template in anything in that. Uh, you have to roll up your sleeves and work to capture that opportunity. And when you capture it, it's huge. It's very rewarding. Uh, I just have a small question and it's actually out of on what Ali said it's about you know uh, when you put the spotlight on those uh, successful entrepreneurs uh, is this enough to inspire people to go into entrepreneurship or there's there is more to, to give I mean we saw a lot of competitions um, uh, uh, in computers Badr, and a lot of other um, supporting uh, support coming for those entrepreneurs or people who want to be entrepreneurs but I don't know how fast they are moving and um, is there is more to add like I mean uh, the culture of um, financial education um, it's really lacking in the community people are like um, either ha having already business families like family business or they are not in the business they're just in the career path where the routine thing is going on and we're happy with that and everything so what's really the gap where's where's the place that we have to really fill in and uh, focus on that this is the fast track or the best track to, to focus on instead of uh, being really scattered and everyone is uh, seeing a point of view about it. I just want to mention there are 33,000 schools in Saudi Arabia. There are 5 million students. Not all of them have family members that have family businesses. Okay, So let's not generalize what we see in the metropolitans to uh, over uh, everything. There is a lot that is coming to the market, to the job market, very in the, in the next few years. The change of what happened with the Ministry of Education uh, with the new, uh, new minister is a positive change. We've seen, uh, the, uh, as I said, in the past two and a half years, things have differed. We're plagued with decisions that were done before that but it's changing, and that's why I'm positive. So I'm just, just trying to highlight, let's not look at just the metropolitan and say, this is Saudi. No, Saudi Arabia is an area, two-thirds of, uh, one-third of the United States, two-thirds of Western Europe, with a lot of people in it. So I'm just saying that. Uh, I'd just like to you know, point out, when we say you know, exposure, give them exposure, uh, it can mean two different things. It could mean like, you know, showing examples of successful entrepreneurs, or it can mean giving those entrepreneurs that are, you know, just starting, uh, giving them access to new markets or to investors. So, I mean, there, there are two different things. But to me personally, I think the first kind is extremely important in building the awareness part. Uh, I don't know who, for example, here saw the, the speech of uh, Mr. Muhammad al-Balla just, just before this one. You know, stuff like this is extremely inspiring, and it, it gives people the idea that, you know, you're not destined just to have a desk job for the rest of your life. There are other ways you can you can be successful and, and, and change the world and, and build your own empire, even starting out as a, as a single person. Um, so, you know, and that's why I personally got, you know, into entrepreneurship, and I said, you know, 
I'm not only destined to, 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 to have a, a day job. It's because I saw stories about certain people who, who made it. Sergey and Larry, uh, Bill Gross was, was a personal influence of mine. And, and when you, I think you should probably, you know, teach those uh, to children, teach those stories uh, to children and, 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 and make these successful entrepreneurs that really change the world as, as role models that are, that are you know, spread in, in society. Especially from local market. I, I would like to comment on this. Um, what Abdurrahman mentioned, what, the, what Barak mentioned in terms of uh, education uh, is exactly the answer and the environment is the answer to your question. Family businesses are successful in entrepreneurship because they have the environment, because they have the role models. Uh, a young uh, kid grow up to see their father, their uncle, their cousins doing stuff, aspiring to stuff, creating successes, and they know that they have the same genes and they, they can do it, and uh, it's not that they're smarter or they, they had a better opportunity or chance or whatever, and they go ahead and do it. Others have every single aspect to it, still fear. Yani, we still live, not just in Saudi Arabia, and the whole of the Middle East, we still think that the West is better somehow, that they are superior creatures in terms of what they can do. Uh -huh. Now, anyone who've met any uh, person who studied in the West or something, see that it, it's not the case. Uh -huh. Every country have its uh, bright people and have its uh, non so bright people. And uh, that's the case everywhere. So just the thought that you can do it, and this is where the awareness part fall. If, if that guy who was a kid playing soccer with me in, in the back alleys of, of, of this neighborhood did something amazing, this means that I can do it too. Huh? And that's the kind of message that needs to be sent. Uh, I have something there. I think people in general are rational. So let's go back to the economics. As uh, Muhammad said, Incentives will drive people to do things. In the, government, in the public sector, the average salary is 7,000 riyals. Non-Saudis in the private sector have an average of less than 800 riyals per month. Small businesses and some of the medium businesses are run by non-Saudis who, who are okay with making 2,000 riyals or 3,000 riyals per month. So it would be impossible to drive Saudis from a comfortable job that is secure and safe to competing with people who are okay with 3,000 riyals per month. And adding to the problem, now they can do it legally, the non-Saudis. With 100,000 riyals, they can open their own business and compete with Saudis. Uh, so there is uh, an income gap between being an employee and working for yourself as an entrepreneur. small comment uh, just related to the success stories um, a, a very powerful story that that really uh, caught my attention uh, how many of you know the story of uh, Roger Bannister um, so uh, uh, so Roger uh, so in 1954 um, everyone thought up till that day that it was impossible to run uh, a mile in four minutes or less now, he broke the record that year. Now, the story wasn't about him breaking the record. The story was, after he did that, a number of, of different runners broke the record even further. So, in the same year. So, what's amazing is that, and, and that's why, so you look at Maktoub, you look at, uh, 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 hopefully, success stories coming out of Saudi, and I, and I do believe that it just takes, it's like Saudi uh, Subha, and hopefully just, just, just one uh, success story uh, that, that, uh, that, that, uh, that really gets the attention it deserves in Saudi. And I, and I seriously believe that, that the rest will follow. Because until today, uh, we don't have role models in the internet industry or the tech industry in Saudi. We hear uh, uh, a bit of, of, of things that are happening. But um, let's hope that, that uh, in, in the near, very near future, we're going to hear that big success story, the Roger Bannister story of Saudi internet startups. And hopefully, we're going to see a lot more that follows that. This is, I heard the Roger story once. It was coupled with another story that is very similar. 
about, uh, I forget the name of the person, a young university student came late into class, so four formulas on the board, wrote them down, thought they were homework, went back home, stayed all weekend working at them, came back upset on Monday to the professor, told him, these are extremely difficult homework, I was only able to solve two of them. And the professor answer was that those were examples of impossible formulas that no one was able to solve. Uh, and that guy, because he didn't have the glass top of thinking that this is impossible, and he would give up after a couple of tries, thinking it's a homework, I, I must, it's not that hard. If others can do it, I can do it. And was able to solve at least two of them. So this is the kind of mentality we need to change with success stories. I think it's the last question. There's only one minute left. <laughs> yeah, just going to back to uh, Isam's comment about the economics of the situation, uh, and putting aside that people are rational, uh, let's, uh, let's focus on uh, has the boom in the past 20, 30 years in Saudi Arabia and the GCC ma made like youth uh, especially more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, no, uh, sedative, sedated to the fact of going out there and and, and uh, trying to make something out of themselves. Uh, do you think the value of money, uh, how we perceive the value of money and the value of hard work in, in the GCC compared to other countries within the Arab world uh, is different? No, I think the incentive is still missing in the last, say, three decades. Uh, in, in general, I'm talking. There are exceptions, but in general, uh, having a safe job, uh, being employed by the government, mainly the government. In the private sector, we only have 600,000 Saudis with an average of 3,000 riyals per month. So it seems that they are forced to work for the private sector. If they have the chance, they would still go to the government, uh, the public sector. Uh, so in, in general, no. I think there is something is broken. Uh, the small and medium businesses are not attracted enough for anyone who is rational. I'm not rational. <laughs> That's why I'm an entrepreneur. Maybe jihad is, I don't know. But uh, I don't think the current structure is attractive enough. There is something to be fixed. OK, well, uh, to wrap up, I would like to thank everyone in the panel today. I'd like to thank you for attending so late um, well, uh, today. And uh, at least it's so late for me. Huh? Uh, well, uh, uh, I want to keep the optimistic atmosphere. Uh, we can't be working in entrepreneurship. We can't be working in, in trying to, you know, stimulate an industry to happen and not be optimistic. Uh, so let, let's have the optimism. Uh, let's, uh, as per uh, a quote I read uh, some time ago, let's dream and let's uh, reality catch up. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for attending. Thank you.